today is a, as it says, forgive as you are forgiven. Think of that for a moment. I need a focus on that topic today. I need a focus and let it be your bullseye, a target. Not just to read, not just to see what's there. Forgive as you are. Forgiven. It is so easy to say. It is so easy to say those words, but a very difficult journey. If I have someone who believes in honesty, can we hear amen? amen. You weren't sure. I'm going to say it again. It's easy to say it, but extraordinary difficult to live. Depends on the scars you receive from others. Depends on the hurt. Sometimes people can do you things that you feel like you're run over by a Mack truck. We can do things to you that really is inhumane. Tragedies happen. Anyone know the word homicide? Homicide happened that shouldn't happen. People taking others' lives. You say, how can I as a family member forgive those people or that person? Very, very difficult. But the apostle and the physician Dr. Luke, just repeat what God says in Luke chapter 1, verse 7, 37. With God, all things are possible. So to be able to live that journey, we need deep down a relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ. In Bible study and Wednesday, which I would encourage everyone, make an effort, please, pretty please, loving please, if you can make it, please come to Bible study. Sunday isn't enough. Tell your neighbor that, please. Tell him, pastors, I should say, Sunday isn't enough. It's where we take the Bible and we dissect it. It's where we eat it, we drink it, we talk about it, we give testimony, we laugh, we have a great time. All those who have been in Bible study, can we have our amen for that or a clap? Put your hands together. You're missing too much, brethren. Too much. And this is why it's so hard to forgive as you're forgiven. Because just hearing it on Sunday isn't enough. It's a time we have on Wednesday. We, we have so much fun on Wednesday that you're not having any fun here today. Why? Number one, we dress the way we want to dress. We just wear some clothes. You need to come and say, Pastor, and it's his jeans and his shirt outside of his pants. And I'm in soft wears. You need to come out and see how we have a good time raising hand, giving testimonies. We have one of our sister who is here right now while we're doing Bible study. And when I was finished, she gave her answer and said, Pastor, told the whole group, we put you in a comfort zone that you're not afraid to speak your mind. We put you in a comfort zone that you know you're with family, that you can bring out your innermost sadness and your stress and anxiety and hear others joining with you and praying and saying, listen, I'm going through the same stuff. You know why? Anyone have heard this cliche? Misery likes? <laughs> Amen. She says, wait, I'm not alone. I thought I was the only one going through this. That's the time we have a Bible study. And she said, Pastor, and she was about to take out the text, someone who was really scarred me so bad. And I haven't refused to speak to that person because they were so terrible and awful. But after Bible study, she says, you know what? 
Pastor, I'm going to answer her text, and I'm going to begin to speak to her in Jesus' name. That's what Bible study does. It, it, it puts you in a, a, a way to learn. So we must understand what we say to forgive. I wouldn't say I was doing a research, but I don't want to miss any of this. Do you know what medical benefits we receive when we forgive each other? The physical benefits are low in your anxiety. It lowers your blood pressure. I know no one here takes blood pressure medicine, right? But it does that. Because remember when you're uptight with problems and, and hatreds or in your heart for revenge and retaliation, your pressure, your blood, we are the doctors in the house and the nurses. It does stuff to you medically. It makes your immune system stronger. And it also increases your self-esteem. Because all of a sudden you're mean and one moment your self-esteem is said, no, I'm not going to go to that level. Every child of God needs to be held at a higher standard. Do you agree with me? We need to be held at a higher standard. to get to that level and the greatest spiritual benefits we get for forgiving each other is a new restoration a new beginning restoring our relationship with people and Almighty God a new restoration a new restoring we are forgiveness isn't easy very difficult depending on the scars and the wound that those individuals or people put on you most times it's not strangers that wounded you most times it's not People who you don't know, most time it comes from your own blood relatives. That's why the scar is so painful because they said, no, they shouldn't have done that. Then you begin to think back way when you grew up and say, man, I even loaned them $200 last year. I provided for them. I gave them shelter when they had nowhere to stay. It's not easy. But our Lord Jesus Christ to his disciples said, Lord, how do we pray? We'll find that that Matthew, one of his disciples, recorded Jesus saying, Matthew chapter 6, Matthew chapter 6, Verses 9 to 15. Is it okay if you stand with me, please? Let us pray the golden prayer that God taught his disciples. Tell your neighbor, Pastor, doing his spiritual aerobics this morning. See, I want us to remember the sermon. I want to articulate my words. I'm in no rush. I'm not going to scream. I'm preaching and teaching, which is the way God wired me to be. Because I want when you leave here, you leave with a word. You leave with a scripture. You leave something that would nourish your body until we meet again on Wednesday and then again on Sunday. We all need a spiritual snack. To strengthen our spiritual muscle. Come on now. Can you get your spiritual muscle? We need spiritual muscle. To deal with this world today. And we'll pray with our eyes open. Because we're not fanatics. And we're not legalistic. God's a simple God. And if you're driving. You can pray this prayer. 
If you're cooking, you can pray this prayer. Wherever you are, even at work in silence, if you cannot do it loudly. He says, very simple, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we trespass against others. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I'll move into another translation. We did say, and forgive us of our trespasses as we trespass against others. Many of our younger brethren who are here today might say, I'm not trespassing against anybody. I see these signs that say, don't trespass. It means something different to them. So another translation says, and Forgive us. Instead of the word trespass, we're going to use another synonym. Forgive us of our sins as we forgive others that sin against us. Can we give God praise? And one that we grew up on, like the King James Version, says it this way. And forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors. But it all means forgive us of our what? Sins. As we forgive others that sin against us, can we give God praise for those cancellations? Please be seated. Forgive us, Lord. Forgiveness is hard. Would you say after me, please? Forgiveness is hard, Lord. So everybody can be on the same page. Tell your neighbor, Pastor can't help himself because he grew up being a school teacher. God was preparing me for the pulpit. God always prepare you. You have an assignment for everyone in this room. If you're obedient to his call. Forgiveness is hard, Lord. Sometimes seems impossible. Let's say that again. Sometimes seems impossible. Who's ever been there? Can we raise our hand? Come on, y'all been there. Y'all been there. So you pray that price, oh God Almighty, it's so hard. Right now, how oh, can I forgive that those behavior and that brutality? But you told us to forgive. Is everyone saying it? But you told us to forgive. Don't let the devil tie your tongue out. Don't let the devil say, I'm not going to say it. He is good for that. The more you say the word of God, is the more you get spiritual muscle and strength. If you don't participate in it, then, then you're not obedient to God. Because he's the one who speaks through me. I'm his vessel. I will repeat that. I've been saying it so many times. And I'll say it again. When anyone, anyone speaks the word, it's God who's speaking through you. Because he is the word, the word of God, the word of God. We did this in Bible study. I said, find 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. 
God breathed these words. The inspiration of these words that are written here is good for correction, is good for admonition. We, we admonish you with love for correction, for righteousness. God placed this word here for us. So again, whenever you speak the word of Jehovah God, you're speaking for God. If you agree with that, can you say amen? So when you participate in this, it's God who is speaking through you. It seems almost impossible. I know we have weaknesses in the house. I wish you were in Bible study, then we'll just pause and you'll tell your testimony. I'm just promoting Bible study for your own good. At that time, we'll stop. I saw some members of the Bible study that did like this. Choo, choo. <laughs> I saw it. But you told us to forgive. And not seven times, but 70 times seven. Four, if I do my math, arithmetic in preaching is 400 and what? 90 times and more. That's a lot, Lord. Tell him that. That's a lot, Lord. But give us courage, strength, and humility to forgive. Can we give God praise for that? I'll share with you two parables that Jesus Christ and earth shared with his disciples as we are sharing today. Many of us are aware of these too. So this is just a reminder. I'm going to preach what's on the screen. Matthew chapter 18 verse 21 to 35. But he told me to preach also Matthew chapter 18, verse 18, 19, and 20 before I go there. Eighteen says our God has given us believers power to bind things on this earth. And if it's bind on earth, it will also be bind also in heaven in the name of Jesus Christ. And whatever we decide to give permission to be set free, I like the New Living Translation, so the people who are not in Bible study understand better. Whatever we are allowed is to set free. And this earth will be set free in heaven. What a power God gives us. <laughs> Hallelujah. And 19 says, whatever we pray together as a group, whatever we pray together as a group our God hears us and will give it to us today in the name of Jesus Christ he will he will and then verse 20 says where there are two or three or more followers another translation says where there are two or three or more are together in my name, I'll be present. I know he's present in this house today. 
I know he's present in this house today. That's the God that we served, a very forgiving God. And now I preached. So you know this is the word of God. You can go back and look for it for your homework. Matthew chapter 18, verse 21 to 35. Matter of fact, 18 and 15 even talk about our sins, but I won't go there. You can read it yourself. God is showing us through Jesus Christ some ways to forgive. He told a story. That a man or we ourselves have a hundred sheep. We are shepherd of a hundred sheep. As God is our shepherd. He is our shepherd. Hallelujah. Isn't he the good shepherd? Isn't he the grace of God? The goodness of God? Isn't he the good, good shepherd? The good, good father? Because the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want a good shepherd he has referred to himself that's how we should behave a hundred sheep and one sheep when he did the count was not accounted for it's not time that sometimes we are not accounted for in the house of God Sometimes we go astray. <laughs> Hallelujah. Our God is looking for all those who are going astray this morning. He's looking for them. Where are they? Where are they in my house? Where are they to praise me? Where are all the people? Where are my sheep? He's saying he's still out there. So we are his followers. We are his disciples. We need to find that strength. We need to get hold of one straight. No matter if we have a 99, no matter if we have 90, he left the 99 and went out looking for that one straight. And when he find that straight, he begins to glorify God. Thank you for that straight. Thank you for that member who came back to give him praise. He magnified that straight glorifying that stray more than he does in the 99. Brethren, let us all looking for that stray. Let's get our stray brother, our stray sister. Let's get all of those people who are not coming to church. A reminder, will you start with your family first? That's where we need to be starting. They'll give you a lot of black eyes, is that clear? They'll embarrass you, insult you, but don't give up. Don't give up. That example show how merciful God is. That parable shows Dante, I like your focus as a teen, and Justin just looking to get the word. That's why I preach the way I preach. I'm not in a rush. If I go in a rush, you won't even understand me. Because I want everyone to absorb the word of God. That's why you're here today. There got to be a word to help someone today. Anyone agree with that? There got to be a word from the pulpit that is good. If you're focused, it will lead you out of here rejoicing. That shows how merciful God is. That he'll do whatever it takes for us to serve him. Forgiving God as he forgives us every day. He forgave that straight. Begin to magnify it that we have brought one in. The Bible says that when we as brothers and sisters are able to save someone who's going astray, God give us praise and he blesses us. He blesses us. He blesses us. Don't feel down. A time to make you feel frustrated, but don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Finally, as we close, I've learned one thing. I've studied, I've done everything into being a school teacher. God, I've had to transform that knowledge. And the way Jesus preaches too. 
I don't want to overlay, over, overload your cable. You will burst. I just want you to have enough to leave here today. And he says right there, here was a king. The next part we gave the show forgiveness. Play, please pay close attention to this example Jesus used. Close attention. Here's this king. And I imagine it must be a loving king because he loaned out monies to his servants. Many of us do that, right? But many of us have been hurt. Don't raise your hand. People are so nice when they need a loan. Anyone know what I'm talking about? They're so sweet. Money, honey dropping from their lips when they're trying to get the, those monies. And after they get it, oh, is it tax time now? I've been told many times, wait until I get my tax return. It have arrived there. They have returned the monies to this day. Wait till I get my taxes. Anyone know what I'm talking about? I'm going to pay you back. It's the same thing happened. Many of us have been through that. If you haven't yet, you're not in the real world. It does happen. And the king says, Servant, you have for me 10,000 talents. One translation says it's simple, millions of dollars. Is that clear? Bible, that's the way the Bible speaks in some translation. Why well, encourage in Bible study? We go through many translations and we read it together to see the difference. I don't bring discernment and clarity. Same word. But the NLT and the New Century Version put it this way. They didn't say talents because to us it doesn't really matter, right, Justin? But when I say millions of dollars, who understands millions of dollars? Can we raise our hand? Millions of dollars. If the Bible said 10 talents are not a translation, when it comes to Bible study, we'll teach you how to use other translations. It says millions of dollars. And the servant plead for forgiveness to the king. The king wanted to settle up all his debts. At that time, enormous amount of money millions astronomical amount and he cried to the king make all the reason and excuse to pay it back the only way in bible study again come to sunday school, the bible study then i'll teach you to say the only way in bible study in studying the word deep down when you read it, this isn't there. The only way this man could have paid back the king is by first selling himself to the king with his whole family. They call it bond servants as slaves. In those times, that's what happened. Can't pay a debt. You and your family move in and begin to what? Work to cover the debt. Those days he could never cover the debt. He'll die before he could. And he played it to the king. You know what the king did? What the king did? Forgave him of those debts. Because there's no way he could have paid it back. Forgave him. He pleaded for forgiveness. The same servant, on his way, he saw someone that owed him just a hundred talents. The other one was what? 10,000 talents. Just 100 talents. A pittance compared to a millions of dollars. And that same servant cried out to this man who the king just set free and begged him for mercy. Begged him to help him. And he held the guy in his throat. That servant that was just forgiven held him up and sent that servant to jail. The man had been just forgiven of what? Millions of dollars and could not show compassion to the servant. Isn't it the way some people behave today? Oh, will God forgive us 
every day. Forgive us sometime when we don't even know we create wrong. He's forgive us of our wrongs. Forgive us of our sins. Because church, he's a good, good shepherd. Do I tell you? He is a good, good shepherd. Today, with man, everything seems impossible. But the command of our God, command, brethren, is to forgive each other as we are being forgiven. Do you agree with that? We should give and forgive each other. Remember the prayer I gave you. Lord, it is so hard. Are you forgetting the prayer that quickly? Lord, it is so hard. Can you tell him that? It's so hard. It seems impossible. Seems impossible. But God Almighty, because you say so, because he say so, let us ask him now for courage, for strength, and for humility to not only forgive seven times, but 70 times seven. Can we give him praise for his forgiveness? And if you're reminded this morning of something to receive the word, if you have received it, can you give him another praise? Again, church, in this large group, is very easy to applaud. It's very easy to join the crowd. But individually, on your own account, start now as a follower of Christ. That what man says, not what God says. Again, it is very what? Difficult. Depending on how you're wounded. Depending on the scars that that person gave you. But remember, when you forgive, forgiveness is for yourself. Is that clear? Forgiveness is for you. The bitterness will come out of you. Your blood pressure will go down. Your anxiety, your self-esteem rises. And you beheld the higher standard. Church, it isn't easy. Especially when you're speaking to people who wounded you who should know better. Somebody who gossip your business, talk dirty things about it, isn't easy. There are even some, I'll say it again, I know there are brethren in this house right now because I saw their reaction because I hold your prior request in esteem and high value. But I know those who have lost their loved one means somebody shot their own family member or shot their sister or their wife or their husband, took their lives right there. Families taking each other's lives. I think that's so difficult. It's difficult for me to. It almost seemed impossible. Again, come to Bible study. Any preacher, anyone show you in the Bible what I'm about to say. You make sure they show it to you. Sometime, forgiveness don't mean you rush forgiveness. Some wounds are so deep, it takes what? Everyone, everyone said time. Take time. Yes, God knows. Who knows it takes time? He does. So then you have to wait for it to filter, to deal with it. Depends on what? The type of scar you received. But while you're going through that transformation, you just keep asking God to help you. Is that clear? If anyone is here today. Just say, Lord, help me. I know it seems like impossible, but help me, Lord. I need your help. You know what the person does to me. 
but let it loose it's for yourself get that poison out and you're gonna feel a jubilation of joy right now give God joy for that a jubilation of joy
We celebrate your goodness at this moment, Father. Great are you, Lord. Come on, think about your own situation and what he has brought you through. And just we simply say, great are you. Great are you, Lord. Has he opened doors for you? Just declare that. We say. sickness in your body and he's healed your body we declare great are you great are you, great are you Lord. has he been in broken relationships for you we declare great are you Lord. we say great, great are you Lord. one more time we say 